Greetings. Peace, everybody. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is Kim, your host, and we are live with the dawning show of Community Radio. Um, Welcome back. Thank you all for calling in. Um, I apologize. I was a little late today, Um, but I'm here and welcome back. And today is Monday or Ojo Ajay. All right, so this is actually a day for money, money Monday, money Mondays. Uh, It's a good day to start a business or to discuss economics or anything related to finances. So um, that should get you all started off on on something good today. Uh, Again, this is the community, uh, community show, the dawning edition or segment. And um, we're testing out some new hours to see if, um, to give everybody a chance to call in and um, give everyone a chance to call in and share that can't usually make it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, The new hours that we have are are, um, on Monday and Friday. You can call from 7 to 9 a.m. On Tuesdays, we keep our regular hours, which are 1 to 3 p.m. And on Wednesdays, we are live at night from 9 to 11 p.m. So you have plenty of chances to call in and uh, make your comments or just to tune in and share. Um, We also have started our Phase 1 Challenge, which started on Sunday. So if you're not registered, make sure you get signed up. You can go to SuduluHouse.com. You have to be enrolled in phase one of the training. And the purpose of the challenge is to help everyone move through phase one a little bit, uh, just a little bit quicker so that we can start to just expand on your nation and it'll give you all a chance to participate more in some of the subsidiaries of uh, Anu Nation. So if you have, like, if you would like to volunteer for the shows or um, work with the Africa Initiative or any of the other projects that we have going on, uh, you have to at least have completed phase one of the training. So at the end of the at the end of the challenge, which runs through June, there's going to be a retreat where everyone can finally meet up and see each other, get to talk to each other, and kind of celebrate the completion of phase one. And then we'll finally, finally be able to move on to phase two. Um, phase one takes a while and it's just because it is about ministry to self. So usually, uh, that takes the longest because that's the thing we don't want to work with the most is our own stuff, you know? Um, today, again, today is Monday. And if you are into astrology, we've got the sun in Aquarius and moon in Pisces. And this is kind of a, a strange, um, combination here because you have the Aquarius sign which is uh, pretty eccentric and um, just a non-conformist uh, non-traditionalist kind of goes against the against the grain uh, but they're very inventive has you know they have a lot of great ideas and then you have Pisces and Pisces is really like kind of a mystic you know this mystic hippy dippy flower child, incense burning, meditating kind of person. So you've got um, two very interesting uh, energies coming together on today. So today, uh, my advice would be, based on that, is to do something out of the ordinary or just something, you know, completely strange, something you normally wouldn't do. And um, the energy that you're feeling today uh, might be like, um, it's, it's that Aquarian energy of of wanting to go against the grain. It's like you don't really feel like doing what you're supposed to do or um, like going, you know, you might not feel like um, doing anything, you know, that you normally do. And this is also a good day for studying astrology and magic. Anything that has to do with magic uh, is a good day for that. Uh, We also have the numerology for today which breaks down to five. And uh, when I think about five, I'm thinking about 
all of the things related with the number five. Of course, I first think about Oshun, but then I think about uh, your talents. You know, you have five fingers on each hand, five toes. Uh, I just think about this uh, this pattern of a pentagon, you know. Um, so I'll let you all tell me what you think about the energy of five today. I won't impose on what I think just yet, but I'll let you all share. Uh, and also... This is for Anwar since he was uh, since he uh, asked about it last Monday, last time we uh, we were on the air. The word of the day is for Clint, and for Clint means to be just completely choked up. You know, you're just too emotional to speak. You're over, just overcome with lots of emotion. So that is our word for today: V E R K L E M P T for Clint. Uh, I think the last time we did like a word of the day, word of the day, it was jejun. And so the reason why I included this is just to kind of, you know, expand to help expand your vocabulary or just, you know, just some fun things to throw in for the dawning. So I know like a lot of times when people wake up, they get their tea or their coffee, they may read the paper or turn the news on. And some of the things that they go to first are, of course, the horoscopes, um, you know, and things like that, maybe the crossword puzzles. So uh, I decided to do like a word of the day. So for Klimt is the word we're using today. All right. Um, we're going to go to a quick break just to um, get some music going for you and to shake things up a bit. And I will be right back. All right. Welcome back to Community Radio. Again, I'm your host, Kim, and we are, I am back. I hope you can hear me. I think I was having some mic issues. Uh, that was square one, just a little soak or whatever, to wake you up and shake you up. Um, that I had a, a really good friend in college, and she was from Trinidad, so I got blasted with soak up, like, all the time. <laughs> But uh, that's one of my favorite songs. It really does shake you up and wake you up and get you moving. So I will that that uh, pumped a little energy your way if you're kind of dragging this dawning. But um, just to get back to what we were speaking about earlier, again, today is Monday, which is a good day for finances. And in Yoruba, the day would be, uh, we would say, Ojo Ache. All right, and um, we've got the sun in Aquarius and moon in Pisces. So uh, kind of a strange energy going on right now. Uh, you may feel very just kind of opposite <laughs> or just feeling uh, like you kind of don't want to do what you're supposed to do maybe. Um, and this may be like a good day to just kind of do something out of the ordinary. Uh, our word for today was for Klimt which means to be just um, really just kind of uh, wrought with emotion or just choked up, just too emotional to speak, all right? And so that brings us to the next part of the show. I actually, you know, I was listening to or reading some of the comments on some of the videos, and I see that a lot of people like the patakis that are shared sometimes that um, Chief will share. And um, so I thought, you know, Sometimes when we read these patakis, they can be a little bit confusing because the language is so coded. Of course, you get this, like, a really engaging story, and the stories are really good, and you kind of get, like, uh, one understanding. But there's so much layered in those different patakis that um, it may be hard to break through some of the understanding. And maybe you have to be at a level of, uh, with you know, just within the culture or understand the culture a bit more to really get what's being said. So one of the things I wanted to do today is to try to expand your mind a a little bit and to see if we can get you um, thinking uh, just a little bit out of the, out of the ordinary. And this may help you like when you're trying to decode uh, different stories or to just get you out of kind of your linear thinking a bit or just your, uh, Uh, I would say literal thinking, you know, when we read something, we just get a basic fundamental understanding and we don't really dig a little bit deeper. So I was going to share something that we used to do that we used to do like in school. And you may have had these two, which are these kind of um, 
like riddles or whatever that you have to kind of figure out what's really being said and uh, it's kind of like a little puzzle. So I'm going to start off with something really easy and I'm going to do like maybe three of these before we get started with the topic for today. Um, I also want to make sure I mentioned the number is 515-605-9862. Just press the number one if you have a comment or if you would like to uh, say anything. There is no topic for today, uh, but um, I have, uh, I can uh speak on something. I do have a few topics in mind just to kind of start your day off with. So make sure that you participate. I'll be um, seeing if you all can guess some of these. So the first one I wanted to share is, uh, is kind of titled something about Mary. Okay. So Mary's mom has four children. The first child is called April. The second one is called May. And the third one is called June. So what is the name of the fourth child? Now, I'm going to see if you all can figure that one out. Um, And like I said, I like doing these because it kind of gets you out of your in-the-box thinking. And this may help you when you're starting to read uh, like a lot of uh, different pata keys or whatever to help you see some of the layers in the story and just to get you out of your uh, literal thinking. So if you have a guess, Or if you'd like to comment on that one, just press the number one. All right. So no takers just yet. So I'll repeat it. And then I'll go to the next one. Uh, Mary's mom has four children. The first child is called April. The second is called May. The third is June. And I'm asking, what is the name of the fourth child? Okay. So we'll see who can guess that one first. And don't Google it. (laughs) I'm going to go to 816. 816? Hi, is it Summer? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, what made you think that it might be Summer? Um, well, because it was April, May, and June. Okay. And then, 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 then what comes after the spring would be the summer. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't think of any other months. That okay. sounded like a name, I guess. Okay. So, hmm. So. Let's see if somebody yeah. else will. Um, I'm gonna leave you on the line, and then I'll I'll, I'll give you the answer. Let me see if someone else is gonna chime in within a few seconds. I'm gonna read it one okay. more time to see if you guys are listening. All right. Mary's mom has four children. The first one is April. The second one is May. The third is June. What's the name of the fourth child? All right. I wish I had like a little clock ticking thing <laughs> that I could do like a, like a, uh, what was that? Jeopardy or something, you know, Jeopardy. the little Jeopardy style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, how's your dawn and going so far? Oh, it's um, better now that I'm on the line or, you know, oh, okay, on the good. call because your energy is so good and just, bubbly and just really good so it's like oh and the music and <laughs> just the whole format it just I it's cool. just flowing good and I, I like it so good thank yeah. you it's good. Yeah. all right so we only have one brave soul to to attempt to answer the riddle so I'll go ahead and give the answer all right y'all Can ready I guess one more time yeah I guess one more time mm-hmm. star sure no star Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. This is. Okay. Let me go to Sister Michelle. I think. I, I think everybody's googling now. Let's see. Three, four, seven. Good morning. How are good you? Good morning. Sister Kim, how are you? Mm-hmm. Sister Georgina. Oh, good. Hey, thank you. I'm um, good. Um, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Um, I just wanted to take a crack at the riddle. All right. What you got? I actually like, I love these. It's Mary. Mary's exactly. Mom. Did you Google that? <laughs> no, I didn't. That's it. I the heard it as soon as you said it. You, did you? You caught it real quick. So tell everybody oh. why is the fourth child's name Mary? Because you started off with Mary's mom. That's the key. That's it. Yeah. Did you get that, Georgina? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, right I said Mary's, Mary's mom has four children. First is April, uh-huh. second is May, the third is June. What's the fourth child? Fourth child's name. So that is the answer to the riddle, Mary. <laughs> that was a slick one. Yeah. But you know what? It was yeah. pretty, that one was pretty easy. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to leave you two on the line and see if uh, someone else is going to chime in. Again, you all, if you're on the line, just press the number one if you'd like to change the subject or if you'd like to discuss anything else. We haven't gotten into a topic just yet. We're still just kind of vibing this, this dawning. The number is 515-605-9862. All right, so this is a good one. I'm going to see if you all can get this one. Man wanted to enter a club. Every member of the club knew the password. So the man was hidden, you know, beside the wall and was trying to listen to the password as people were starting to enter. So the first member came in and the doorman said 12. And the member replied 6. So the doorman let the, let the first person in. Another member came, and the doorman said six, and the member replied three. So the second person was allowed to go in. So with the guy that's on the side, he's listening, and he's like, okay, I got this. I think I know what the password is. So he went to the door, and the doorman said eight, and the man replied four, but he didn't get in. So why did he not, why was he unable to get into the club? Anybody got any guesses? Anybody? And I'm still I think it was an even number. Repeat? No. (laughs) You need to repeat it one more time? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this man wanted to enter a club, right? He wants to go to this club, but and there was a password. So every member of the club knew the password. So he thought he would like kind of sneak off to the side and listen to everybody as they went in to try to catch what the password was so he could get in. So the first person came to the door and the doorman said 12. And so the member that was trying to get in said six and they were allowed to go in. The next person that came in, uh, the doorman said six. And then the member replied three and he was allowed, allowed to go in. So the guy that was kind of sneaking on the side trying to listen for the password thought he had the code. And so he went up to the door. The doorman said eight. And the man replied four. But that wasn't the password. He didn't get in. So what was the password? This one is a little bit harder. <laughs> it's a little bit tougher. Well, he's you really got to think member. about this one. No. What comes to my mind is he's not a member, so that's what you first said, something about he had to get in. You had to be a member to get in. But Mm -hmm. no, it's not that easy. Okay. No. Anybody else on the line? We got two brave people here. We got Georgina and Michelle. They're the only ones that are brave enough to guess. And put themselves well, out I'm there thinking, to try to <laughs> figure I'm this one out. Maybe it's, it's, no, it's number two, like the lowest no. common denominator. No, right? Yeah, no. that makes sense. I have no idea. I see, I see you, brother Anwar, on the line. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if he can guess. Mm-mm-mm. What? Do you think? Let me see what Omar has to say here. Peace. You called me out, man. You called me <laughs> out. It's too early for this mathematics, and I'm thinking it's 16. No. No. Sorry. No. I'm going. I'm on that one. <laughs> oh, is it one and a half? Is it one and a half? No. no. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me know when you want you're, when you're ready to give up. I was trying to give everybody a chance to. Uh, to answer, but I think you pro- you three are probably the only brave souls we got here that want to try to guess. So I'll repeat it one more time. Guy wants to get into this club and every member of the club knew the password. So he wanted to sneak off to the side and kind of listen in, you know, ear hustle a little bit and try to figure out what the password was. So the first member came up, the doorman said 12, 
and the member replied six. Second person came up and they said six. The doorman said six. The member replied three. So the guy thought he, had, he knew what the code was, you know, the pattern or whatever for the password. And so when he went to the door, the doorman said eight. And the man replied four. And he didn't get in. Wrong password. So what was the password? One. No. All right, y'all give up? Mm-hmm. Everybody One, give two, up? three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. The answer is, wish I had a drum roll, five. What? So tell me, how do we get five? Oh, how many people? Wait. No. Remember the first member? The watchman said 12. Go Mm -hmm. ahead. They said, so so it was six, and then um, then the second member said uh, was six, and then it was three, Mm -hmm. then the answer of the previous number. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. I just seen that now. Nope, that's that's not it either. Mm -hmm. That's well, not what it, it okay. is, like you, like the person, um, so that, what is it? The la- the person that went before him, the answer was three, right? Mm-hmm. And the the, ad, the the second person that came before him, the answer was three. The doorman mm-hmm. said eight, so that three was subtracted from the eight, and that was the no. answer for five. Mm-mm. No. No. Nope. You got me there. All right. You got me too. Here's the the um the story. <laughs> you have to count the letters in the number in the word. So twelve has oh. six letters. Six has three. Oh. And eight has five letters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is it too early? <laughs> no. Um. I have, I still haven't got my coffee, man. I was up late last night. I was still gonna listen to you guys. Now, now, see, I gotta grab my coffee real quick. <laughs> oh god. Okay, I got two more for you, and then we'll jump into some things that you guys would like to discuss. All right. This one may be a little bit easier. So you got four people trying to fit underneath one small umbrella, and they get underneath it, and guess what? Nobody gets wet. How is this possible? That's a huge umbrella. Oh no! I said it was, I said it was a small, small one. Oh. One small umbrella. It's not raining. That's it! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Score one for our war. All right, last one. What's my pride? Okay. What's my pride? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have you. Know, I'm gonna have to download like some little sound clips so I can do like the applause and all that good stuff. Um, here we go, last one, and then we'll start with something else. A black man dressed in all black, wearing a black mask, stands at a crossroad in a totally black painted town. All of the street lights in the town are broken. There is no moon. A black painted car without headlights drives straight towards him, but turns just in time and doesn't hit him. How did the driver know to swerve? He was being jumped by the police. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. Because he's always there? No. Okay. Say that one more time. Okay, one more time. A black man dressed in all black, wearing a black mask, stands at a crossroads in a totally black painted town. All of the streetlights in the town are broken, and there's no moon. A 
A black painted car without headlights drives straight towards him, but turns just in time and doesn't hit him. So how did this driver know to swerve? The whites of his eyes. Hmm? He saw the whites of his eyes? No. He had a mask on. Completely black mask. Is he like a town statue? No. The driver knew that intersection? No. No. (laughs) (laughs) These are really good. Out of the box. Thank you. (laughs) All right. Ready? Everybody ready? Give up? Give up? I know it's early. All right. This is gonna make you. This is gonna make you want to just be like, oh, come on. So the answer Mm -hmm. is, it was daytime. Oh. 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 (laughs) Remember I said there was no moon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. These are great. Thank you, Sister Kim. No problem. Yes, these so are things. Yeah. I'm telling you, we used to do these, um, and believe it or not, we used to do these in grade school. <laughs> and it was just to kind of get our minds, you know, active and, and going, you know, before we started a lesson or whatever. And so I was like, you know what? Those are really good to um to do even still now because it gets you kind of to think outside of the box. So when you're reading these patakis and things, these patakis are almost like riddles, you know, because there's so many different things going on at the same time. You know, so there's just, you know, just the story itself, which can be entertaining and fun. But then there's like hidden lessons. There are, you know, um, ebos in there. There's all different types of stuff going on in these patakis. And sometimes when we don't, uh, think outside the box enough or if we're not uh, so well versed in poetry or whatever it may be or even in the culture like a lot of these things will completely miss you know so it's important to just kind of keep your mind agile and uh, just you know to do some just do some thinking outside of the box sometimes you know so right. that was that <laughs> I just thought I'd try that out on everybody uh, this dawning, just to shake you up and wake you up a little bit. So, how is yeah, everybody? Did. I did. You sure did. Yeah. I'm, 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 right. I'm downstairs drinking my coffee, trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how's everybody's dawning going today? Did you all get a chance to check out um, the show uh, yesterday, the student panel? Sister Michelle uh, and uh, Zach and Charles did a really good job. It was a really good show. Did everybody get a chance to tune in? I was able Georgina. to tune in. Yes, I was able to tune in um, right at the point where Brother the uh, Byron was mm-hmm. just getting off the phone. And okay. so I didn't know until listening further what he was discussing with okay. his father. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so um, I, I was going to chime in, but it was too late. I, I always wait too late to okay. one, but yeah, so, because I did notice that um, Michelle was on the line, and so I wanted to say hi to her. Mm-hmm. And um, so, hi, Michelle. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, sis. Again. How you doing? I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. Thank you for asking. Um, um, and forgive me when I first got on the line. I should have um, greeted you, Kim. I'm um, um, I think I'm still uh, um, trying to grasp all of the teachings from the past couple weeks and mm-hmm. um, wanting to. Um, get it right, 
and I still seem to still have a nervous thing and get it wrong. So my apologies and no problem. forgive me. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Everybody's doing okay? I'm, I'm, yes. I'm well. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, chilly in right. Florida. So we're Is kind of... Yeah, it's like 50. It's not normal. Ooh. So we're mm. a little shaken up, but it's, uh, it's, besides that, we're doing good. Thank you for asking. All right. Yeah, it's a little chilly here too, So, but that's that's nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Michelle uh-huh. was on fire yesterday, though. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, she was awesome. She was awesome. She had the show. So I'm telling you, she was, she was right on it yesterday. No. It was a team effort. We were all on fire. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But but you know you something, brother. That, I've been you, thinking about you brother, had that glow I, yesterday. Yeah. You had the glow, glow yesterday. Let's just say that everybody was on fire doing the job, but you had the glow yesterday. Oh, I appreciate <laughs> that, brother Omar. But you know something. Now that we're talking about this show, you know, I can't stop thinking about brother Byron. Does anybody yeah. know any yeah. updates on him? Uh, I do not. I don't. I did get a chance to um, send a message uh, yesterday, but I um, haven't heard from him or uh, had any updates uh, as of yet. Uh, let me go to another, bring another caller in really quick. This is uh, 703. Hey, hello. Peace. 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 This is Joel. This is Joel. This is the ah, first time calling please. in. <laughs> What's going on, Damn everybody? Please. Happy Donna. Good rising, brother. What's going on? What's going on, Anwar? <laughs> Good rising, brother. Yeah. Good rising, yes, for sure. Um, uh, I'm just happy that I'm able to call <laughs> in. <laughs> I've been trying to call in for a minute, but my schedule is so hectic. Um mm-hmm. But I'm actually glad for traffic this morning. I had to take my kids to school this morning. My wife's mm-hmm. out of town. But um, just, I don't know what the topic is for today, but I just chimed in not too long ago. And, uh, yeah, Sister Michelle, um, good darling to you. You were, like, vibing yesterday. Um, you you said so many things that, uh, that just spoke to me, resonated with me. Uh, one of the pieces was, um, when you were speaking to um, uh, how you have to look at you know your family members um, in different ways you didn't say it exactly like that but that's how I kind of like you know translated over to me and not just you know looking into the, the negative things um, that they kind of handed down to you uh, habits that you picked up and things like that um one thing it it made me look at is what what what's the positive that uh that could come out of the situation uh and for me what actually helped me I grew up in a very um a very kind of like strict apostolic uh you know church going you know kind of people and I found once I started looking into like you know African spirituality that it was a lot of similar things uh, just from, you know, um, not to go into, like, great detail, but, like, um, uh, how we would do, like, uh, going down to the water and just, Mm -hmm. you know, wearing all white and and things like that. So a lot of the things that I saw, I was like, man, you know, this is the positive. This is the thing that, you know, because for some people, it can get it can get a bit scary. But for me, it wasn't because a lot of the things that was happening, like, like oh, I was like, that's the same thing. Like, if it's not mm-hmm. for the same reasons, the actions and the movements are very, very, very similar. So it didn't it didn't scare me moving into certain certain spaces it was almost second nature like okay i'm familiar with that i'm familiar with this and i'm familiar with that um just having a more in-depth understanding of it now definitely uh listening to the show and um 
I just wanted to to, to to chime in on that. I was just like, man, so Michelle is like, she got a hammer in the hand. <laughs> she dealing, she dealing stuff down, man. She was, I, and I went to, I, I came into the conversation um, yesterday on the student panel um, late, and I was just listening in, but I just didn't want to cut the flow. I was just like, man, she's like, she's speaking for me right now, like in so many ways so many ways. So I want to give mm-hmm. thanks to Sister Michelle. Really, really. Uh, yeah. uh, you're welcome, brother. You know, a lot of, you know, yeah. I'm glad to hear that, but we're going through it the same, at the same time. You know, I'm not, the past mm-hmm. is the same, I guess. I'm just talking about what I'm going through, but um, a lot of these uh, issues that I have with my parents and my family, Sister Kim and the women's group have been helping me a lot. So, I'm just sharing what's been shared with me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know what, Michelle, I wanted to um, chime in yesterday, but I I was having some audio issues. I just wanted to um, make it clear, like, it wasn't just you, you know, on the phone that that uh, that that exercise was was for, because uh, when the call started, everybody, you know, maybe – my, I think it was myself and one other person. Like every, the energy of the the conversation that was taking place was everybody was just really really down on their parents, and everybody was just like, I got to move away from my parent. You know, my parents. Is, everybody was kind of just really dogging their parents a little bit. And I know that you know you had shared with us uh, what what you were going through, and I was just like, you know. We that's something you can't skip over. That's just something you can't skip over. I don't care how rough it was or even how loving it may have been. It's like something that is that was your vehicle of travel, so to speak, to get to the planet. You know, so you can't negate uh, the Stargate that you came through. Um, no matter what, and even that exercise that I share with Michelle, that was that wasn't just for her. That was for uh, everybody on the call, myself included, because I've done the exercise too. It was to um, write down five of the most influential women in your life and not just good influences, the five women in your life that have had the most impact. And you can't, um, you can't uh, disclude your mother, like your mother has got to be first on the list. Because that was one of the issues. Like, nobody wanted to acknowledge their mother. Everybody, you know, kind of wanted to steer away from that. But you had to include your mother in this list of five people. And then you have to list all the bad stuff. And you have to list all the good stuff. And then you also do the same thing with your father. You know, so um, taking a look at some of those characteristics, good and bad, kind of help give you a little bit of insight on some of the things that you need to work on. And usually the worst characteristic that you can think of or, or whatever, the one that causes the most anxiety when you just even just think about it or, you know, just at the mention of this person's name, some, some type of feeling or emotion just comes up and it just really sets you off. Usually that's the main thing that you have to work through when you're doing this um, self-reflection to try to do away with that energy that is just really got you kind of riled up or whatever. And that's something that you got to kind of get through before you can really start to working on your soul's mission and, and moving forward. So that exercise wasn't just for Michelle that, you know, and I don't want, you know, I don't want her to be singled out. That was for a lot of people (laughs) on the call that night. Um, let me bring another caller in real quick. This is eight one six. Reading. Um. Hi. Hi. Um. It's it's Georgina again. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. I got off and then got back on. Um, oh. Okay. But if we could, if I could add to, that was one of the reasons why I um uh, wanted to chime in was to give thanks for Michelle's, you know, input and. Um, insight because it was it was something that was for me even so um, I really you know um, that's why I was kind of excited when I heard her you know get on the line I'm like hi you know because I really felt good about 
what she was saying and it was something that resonated with me as well and mm -hmm. um I wanted to give thanks to her and give her her props because she was she was um I, I was very impressed um mm -hmm. um with you know the flow and um then I was able to connect with that so thank you you know something oh thank you sister you know something sister Kim yesterday mm -hmm. I did a before the call I did a ritual for Obatala that's why mm -hmm. I was in all white so I oh. was uh, purifying myself. So I just wanted to mention that because maybe that was part of it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I know, you know, Obatala is my, the opposite end of my energy. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to connect to that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw that in there since you're Obatala. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, like, I, I like the energy. I like the, yeah. I like, yeah. um, what happened but thank you thank you everybody you're welcome hey yeah. could i say something before before yeah. i go mm -hmm. oh <laughs> i just wanted to give a big up to uh to uh, um brother anwar um ha, man on so many levels um we have our conversation and uh we keep in touch um quite often these days and uh just having that uh, sense of community um, mm -hmm. is is so is so so key um, because when you know when you're feeling isolated, it really does put you in a place to where it makes everything a lot more difficult to pursue. But I find myself um, attacking my goals stronger um, because of the men's um, call and the men's meeting. And uh, and brother Anwar, he just uh, man, he drives so many gems off to me, man. <laughs> he just, yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel I have a, another big brother. I mean, I'm one of twelve kids. I'm oh, number wow. nine. Yeah, I'm number nine of um, one of twelve. So, you know, just having that disconnect because of you know I'm on a different spiritual path than everyone right now having that sense of camaraderie and, and, and brotherhood, I'm feeling that again, you know, and, and just being raised in a very large family, that's something that um, that I just grew up around. And having that mm -hmm. again is a very good feeling. And it's, uh, it's motivation. It's motivation to just, you know, keep pushing and keep learning. And one thing he dropped on me is you never stop learning. You're always growing. And man, that mm -hmm. thing has been on me <laughs> ever since he dropped that. And I was like, man, he is so, so right. We were talking about, I think we were talking about something else. But when he dropped that, I just like, man, you know what? That's in everything. Everything that I, you know, come in contact with different people. Um, that's not even on, you know, the I new tip, but just mm -hmm. learning whatever I can from each individual that I come in contact with learning from the shows, um, listening to Chief, you know, speaking with the lady in the grocery store and all of these different things. I was just like, man, this is like, I feel like now I'm more on my, like, divine path because I feel like I'm in the right place. And I feel like, you know, I found a community. So I just want to say that before I run in here and jump on the clock. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Um, y'all guys, on your way to yeah, y'all guys have... Yeah, I'm on my way to work. Yeah, um, Good day, and uh, Good day. yeah, man. Um, this is this is Joel. Sorry, <laughs> this I'm talking about to... Joel. I was in the morning. Work with me, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I, <laughs> I, 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 I want, I want the cigar, man. You need the cigar, I want. Not yet, man. I, I'm <laughs> waiting. I'm trying to trying to be light right now. I'm trying to be light. Just need my coffee. <laughs> I just want to give thanks, y'all guys. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy your day. All right. Thank Have you. Have an awesome day. Mm -hmm. All thank right. You. I've been um, I've been actually uh, I was inspired. I think two weeks ago when uh, when we were having the conversation about uh, how we uh, uh the 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 
Sister Sequoia and Donita and everyone was talking about the finances uh, and just how they were uh, going about inside of their household. So mm-hmm. I took, uh, I've been in the background, like trying to contact all the men that I have uh, heard inside the ANU, mm-hmm. inside the ANU. And I've been trying to organize, uh, just brainstorming with the fellas. Now, I mean, I've had some wonderful conversations with everybody, with Randy, with Sloan, uh, uh, Brother Joel, Justin. Justin's crazy. I, you look, I, I got a lot of respect for Justin, right? Justin, Justin is really creative. He's a very creative mm-hmm. person. I'm putting that one out. And uh, <laughs> yeah. when, when people see it, when, when people see what what uh, what's going Thank on in do. the phase one challenge, I think it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Peep out Justin's uh, uh, testimonial when you see it. But um, uh, I, I have um, I don't have any brothers. I'll, I'll put that one out there first. I have all sisters. Oh, and, okay. um, How many sisters do you have? I have four sisters. Okay. And um, I grew up with my mom, so the sense of brotherhood was very uh, far away from me in my, my past. And I've always tried to have, like, that big brother. I've always had, had like, my, my homeboys and so forth, so on, and trying to find a, a, a brotherhood through that. But I find mm-hmm. that the brothers inside of Anu have such a vibrant and a vital message to be said. And they're everyone everyone I've spoken to right now, especially Big Brother Byron, I, I gotta give him a lot of love, man. He's 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 directing me in so many ways and um I really feel mm-hmm. in this situation. So yeah. so but um the 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 thing what it is is that I, I've been contacting the brothers and just getting to know them and brainstorming about how we can uh, finance, deal with our finances, make sure our families, make sure our individual selves are right, the families are all right, and then how we can move forward with the community. And through this, I've gotten to have very good conversations with the brothers, and they, they're, like I said, I, I feel like we're, we're actually at the stage of really being connected a lot better. So a big shout out, especially for Joel to bring all this up today. I was I was keeping the hidden the hidden brotherhood, but it's cool. Bring it out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, what have you um found what have what has been most difficult, like in your conversations with everybody about um finances and things? What's like one of the biggest issues? Because it probably is something that we all kind of deal with. Step one. Mm-hmm. Everybody, I, I feel like everybody wants to go somewhere. Everybody wants to be somewhere at a, a, at a certain place or, or have mm-hmm. a trajectory or, or a target they want to be at. But if we're still, like, focused on, like, dealing with certain financial losses, like late fees mm-hmm. and certain things that just might come up, where that those things, uh, rich people don't think about paying bills. Let's Let's be real. The reality is when you're rich, you're not worried about paying a bill. You're worried about what, mm-hmm. what your investment didn't, didn't do, or you're worried about certain other things that you did. So we got to get past step one first, meaning not worrying about our bills that we need to be paid and have a certain place of resting in our cat with our money. Meaning like we have like 3000 at least saved in the bank that we can, mm-hmm. if anything happens, it's there to handle that, you know? So, uh, I think that's one of the biggest problems that everybody has that we're constantly getting paid pay, paycheck by paycheck or mm-hmm. just wait for the check to come in so we can pay the bill. So that right. that's where I'm, I know I, for me for a fact, that that's my biggest thing is waiting for the check. Mm-hmm. Rob Peter to pay for Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. So how do you think you can um, start to build some type of, Small wealth, because you know what? That's not the first time I've heard that. I remember uh, having a teacher once that that brought that up, and they said that you know the average person doesn't even have just uh, it wasn't you said three thousand. He was saying five hundred dollars, you know, just five hundred dollars mm-hmm. extra in the bank. And um, 
what do you think um what do you how do you think you can get past that well a couple of the things that we one thing one thing I have noticed about the uh, group is that a lot of us have a lot of different things that we do. Uh, there's a lot of uh, extracurricular things being done other than just the job. So those motions, and I, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm going to look at it in my point of view. In my point of view, you're not going to really get ahead unless you have, well, yeah, you're not going to get really get ahead when you're working a 40-hour job. Mm-hmm. The 40-hour job, especially when you're getting paid under $20, $20 there's mm-hmm. high place where you're going to be constantly having to worry about that paycheck to come in just to pay your bills. Because you're not, you're not being able to make 50 an hour or $200 an hour or so forth, so on. And you're not able to have a... Uh, What's what's the word? Uh, you, uh, your paycheck comes on comes in on Friday. Your bill was due on Monday. From mm-hmm. Monday, now you have a late day, five late days that you have to pay for when you get your paycheck Friday. So now your your bill has already went up ten fifteen dollars mm-hmm. by Friday. Now you're paying them money, extra money for penalties. They're mm-hmm. penalizing you to pay a bill that you spent. And taking, let's say, if it's like a credit card, I don't, I don't really believe in credit. Uh, my mm-hmm. my dad my dad pumped that one into me a long time ago. That was uh, one of his main things mm-hmm. that America messes up the economy with credit. Mm-hmm. So, um, so. Uh, you know, I stay away from credit cards, but when I did have them, I remember those things being the one of the hardest challenges to get over. I have a car mm-hmm. loan, and that's actually that's the only thing that really drives me crazy because I know if I don't pay it by a certain time, mm-hmm. it's going to be like five dollars a day until I mm-hmm. pay it. Think about it. Mm-hmm. So, my one of the biggest things is when we're working that forty an hour job and where our money is limited to uh, a small uh, let's say $3,000 a month and our bills are 28 between 28 and 26 and 28 a month we're barely cutting it so a lot of that stuff has to be minimized at least for a little while so you can save save up at least $500 for the next year or so sometimes Mm -hmm. you have to just really sacrifice on like the things you do, places you go, clothes that you buy. If you got enough clothes, you know what? Save, save, mm-hmm. and save is not always the best option. Also, sometimes like if you can save up to a certain point and then put that money in a place where it will grow a little bit and grow fast, that's good too. But I, I can't get deep in that. That's that's something I'm still learning too. Dealing with like mm-hmm. uh, investments and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But that takes time. I, that takes a put. That takes the space of making sure that you're uh, motivated to cut costs all across the house, cut mm-hmm. costs on all the spendings that you do, and put that money that you're cutting costs to into a place where you never see it again until it gets to the point. Until it uh, stacks to a point that okay, I can use this for investing. Mm, okay. What would you um, What would you recommend investing in? What are you thinking about, or what would you like to get into that you would like to invest in? Um, I think I think the uh, my my personal opinion of the business environment right now at this day and time is that it's hostile, and it's just because of the transition of this president. And all these stocks are rising. This is like mm-hmm. how the this is exactly how the housing bubble started. All the housing started to inflate. Everything started to get look look so good. Everybody was jumping onto it, making some money, mm-hmm. using somebody else's money. And then all of a sudden, something happens, and it just busts. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, man. I, I, I when it comes down to investment marketing, I I think it's I, I don't 
I can't really speak on it that well, but for the things that I know, I don't think I will put my money too much into other businesses unless I'm going to take it out real quick. Like yeah. put a thousand dollars on one stock that's climbing real hard, mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. some uh, or one um uh something that's that's booming right now. You know what's going to be booming really? All the all the um, military or tech technological uh, industries because we're trying to expand the military again. And um, but I, I would I would just look I would just look at what what what's moving real quick and then get get in get out as fast as possible. Mhm. That's what I would so do. So just make a quick profit. Yeah, just to make a quick quick profit. Don't expect too much either. Mhm. Yeah, I remember talking to uh, someone, a friend of mine that used to uh, teach investments to uh, to high school kids. And I remember him saying a long time ago, one of the best things that people can uh, invest in is our um, luxury brands. So like um, uh, uh, Louis I've heard Vuitton. That too. Yeah, because, because just under that one brand of Louis Vuitton, you have so many other companies. I think you have uh, Moe and uh, what else is under Louis Vuitton? Like there's several luxury brands under one one name you kind of kind of have to do the research to see who really is with who but he was saying that that's one of the things that never goes down and the second thing he was saying is uh invest in art now i know that's definitely something that you know people who are kind of living check to check definitely (laughs) don't see as um an investment you know, to buy a piece of artwork or something like that. But that was something else that he was saying, you know, you have to start uh, investing in, investing in things that, you know, um, that grow over time, you know, that don't lose their value. So um, art was another one. And, and that's something that uh, I just know that a lot of people don't even think about because we, you know, I guess, you know, broke people <laughs> or people that don't, you know, like you said, that are living check to check, we we don't really see the value in it. And I think that's that's one of the reasons why it's so important to um, really expand your circle and to really step outside of your comfort zone and to learn a lot about different cultures and, and things like that, because um those type of things, like those type of things, are, um, of course, uh, you know, some of the things that I guess a different culture values, like you know, different types of societies value. Those things never depreciate, you know. But we spend a lot of money on things that do, like cars or, mm-hmm. um, you know, just just silly kind of frivolous stuff. And um, by the time you spend so much money on a TV. Or, you know, mm-hmm. or something like that. You could have bought a piece of art, maybe, that could possibly triple in value, you know, in a few years. Or maybe even less than that, you know. And so, like you were saying earlier about rich people not worrying about paying bills, it's because they kind of, I think they invest in things like that. They, they and, and these things are passed down from generation to generation. And they're not sold. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This is like something that they hold on to. And so many times in, um, I'll say, African-American families or whatever, and we had a caller with this issue, when we actually do have something of value, like um, land or whatever, we're so quick to sell it. You know, a lot of times, especially here in the South, we have a lot of people that have, you know, families that, uh, black families that own a lot of land in the South. But because, you know, the previous generation, like I'd say the civil rights generation, they kind of uh, duped them into thinking you need to leave the farm. You need to you need to dump that and go to college. You know, y'all can go to college now, go to college, get a job, you know, get a state job, get a city job or whatever. And you'll be doing so much better, you know, move to the city. And so then you had no one left, you know, with these, these huge families, you know, they had huge families then. You had no one left to kind of 
uh, watch, attend to what you know all the the land that they had, and then none of the none of them none of the kids wanted to come back and do anything with it either. They left, they're gone, they don't want to deal with it, and so the next thing you know, when someone dies or passes, you know, or transitions. Now it's a problem. Everybody wants to sell it. Nobody wants to keep it, but every, you know, everybody's so quick to sell. And it's always, you know, I've always heard you never, ever sell land. You never sell land. You can rent the land out. You can, you know, you can lease. There's so many things you can do, you know, uh, aside from selling it, you know, or um, even commercial property or anything like that. You just don't sell your land. And so that's something that we, that a lot of families do and don't even have a second thought about it. You know, they're just thinking about how much they can get right now. I'm not moving back south. I'm not taking care of this. Nobody has time to deal with it. Let's just cash it in and and split the money up. You know, or you might have one or two people that want to hold on to it. Hmm? Let me address something inside of that. And this is the man's point of view. This is my experience. This is something I'm going through right now as a 39-year-old man, man in my family. Okay. Um, when it comes down to the land ownership, you know, traditionally, it's usually owned by the women. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the women usually own that land. In, Af- in most indigenous societies, the women are the ones with wealth, and the men are the ones that work the land. Uh, here, it's opposite. In westernized culture, it's opposite. The men usually own everything, and the women are the ones that uh, manage the property to a certain degree. And um, why I say that is because, like, in my family, uh, one of the things that I've been fighting with with my dad for a very long time has been his uh, the opportunity to be taught by him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm trying not to do it to my son. But I find my son to be in a place where I was 18, when I was 18, where I didn't really know what I was doing. Actually, no, I, was, I really wasn't, I'm nothing. Uh, when I was 18, I was already trying to get open up my first business. So, but the thing is, the biggest issue I have is that, like, my the transition of ownership or chiefhood inside of the family is is very hard to it's not happening for for me right now like i'm the i'm the black sheep so i'm always being looked at as oh i'm not good i'm not doing nothing i'm not doing nothing but uh like since i don't get a college degree i think you'll go, go get a doctorate like mm-hmm. like my family my whole family's doctors my dad's mm-hmm. a psychiatrist my um, sister's a pa my mother's a rn you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and um <clears throat> Me and my younger sister are the only business-minded people, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been I've been looking at ways to be taught with proper finances and investment from my father, but I found myself not getting that from him. So I'm giving the information I'm learning through my own study to my to my son, and while he's not doesn't seem to have the ambition like I do right now, I've been trying to push that ambition on him to make decisions to move forward, especially dealing with money. Now he's doing pretty, he's doing, he, my younger, my, my 18 year old is doing really good saving. And I told him that's the most important thing you want to do right now is save all your money. Don't go buy useless stuff. Try to keep all your money, keep, keep st- every, uh, at least, at least half your check. You don't pay any rent. You be all this, this yeah, your responsibility is very minimum. Try to keep all your money as, as much as you can. Because that's one of the things that my dad told me when I was 18. He said, look, take, take t- every time you cut a check in your studio to pay you, don't take take at least 20% and just keep that somewhere where you don't mm-hmm. see it. And just let it stack, yeah. let it stack. Let it stack. Because by the time you turn 25 now, and if you've been doing that, by the time you have 25, you don't have any kids, you're, you're, still, you're still by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be, men and women will be on, you'll have some money. You'll have a good amount of money where you can either go buy it, some property, some land, uh, invest in things that might be able to double your money, triple your money, do it over time. But um, there are certain things that uh, generally, generationally 
I think within the last couple of years, mainly, really mainly between the last 40 years, we haven't passed down. Our sons, our fathers haven't passed down to their sons. Their mo- the mothers haven't passed down to their daughters. And I mm-hmm. think that's one of the issues that we need to really focus on, focus on and address is that, you know, if it took, if it took the mother 40 years to learn that, yeah, like buying Fendi and Gucci is, didn't didn't pay off for me. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? And now the daughter yeah. is buying Fendi and Gucci again, and she's looking at her daughter like, you know, you're gonna find yourself in a place, but she's not afraid to tell the daughter, don't buy that right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There, there's got to be a very uh, uh, centered look when it comes down to the family mission, and that's where that family feel comes in place. Yeah. I'm working on mine. I'm working on mine. So. Yeah. I think your culture has a lot to do with it too because your te- your culture kind of tells you what is valuable and what isn't. You know what I mean? So uh, right. you, you're not probably not spending it on Gucci and, you know, Fendi or whatever. But, you know, another thing, like if you look at most wealthy people, uh, they drive the crappiest cars. I don't say crappy. It's a you know like a very simple car, um, and they don't spend a lot of money on clothing. Um, but you know they always have like a really nice home. But some of the things that we spend money on, like uh, that all the all the external stuff, you know, the right car, the right clothes, and you know things like that. Like they don't they don't really worry about that. They drive something pretty reliable. You know something that can be fixed easily. Um, they don't they don't blow money on on frivolous things or, or like I said earlier things that depreciate. You know so quickly. So I think that's uh, your culture has a lot to do with it um, because it kind of tells you uh, what's considered valuable or not. But we definitely should pass down some type of financial literacy to our children. Because that's definitely something that I know a lot of people probably did not grow up with. You know, your parents don't really discuss the bills with you. You know what I mean? So, you know, as a as a child coming up, sometimes they don't really discuss that right. with you. Uh, yeah, right. so that's something that you definitely, definitely should um, pass down to your children. I, I remember Chief sharing some different things on different shows just about that alone, you know, making kids more responsible for certain things so that they can know the value of something, you know. Um, Another thing, uh, aside from, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, I lost my train of thought. It'll come back to me. But (laughs) it made me think uh, one of the topics that I had. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go one of the, one of the things I've been doing personally has been um uh, you know I've been like study mode all the way through not not only just in any nation and spiritual uh, with the, with my spirit and my soul um I've been looking at everything from carpentry to uh, uh, how to uh, uh, deal with finances you know I've, I've listened to a lot of lectures. Uh, a lot of the people mm-hmm. that I get a lot of good information from, believe it or not, is Dr. Boyce Watkins and Dr. Mm-hmm. Claude Anderson. And mm-hmm. those two, mm-hmm. those two, those, those two men are doing like something that is seen, like you can feel it, touch it, and smell it. That this, they're they're actually doing something that you're you can you can utilize right now. It's practical. It's smart mm-hmm. thinking, and that's what Chief was talking about. Where, you know, with our leaders like what have you done what can you see if -hmm. you can't see what they they, they're they're talking about they're not really leading you nowhere you know and i'm not being i I refuse to be led by blind people you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so one of the things i think we need to really put our put a real eye-opening thought of when it comes down to finances is is this person that's telling me something, how much money have they made so far? Mm-hmm. Now, I can tell you right now, I've made probably about $1.3 million throughout my whole lifetime mm-hmm. in having my businesses. And mm-hmm. I'm dead 
broke from making one point three million throughout mm-hmm. all the businesses I've had in my life. So that's not that's not that's not good financial fiscal management at all. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's there's certain things that we look at when you get educated by other people. How much of their net worth do they make? How much do they still have? You know, how, how mm-hmm. do they use their money? How did they, where where were their losses at? Where I can tell you about my losses. I can tell you about the things that I, I should have done but I didn't. So a mm-hmm. lot of those those things when you look at a financial teacher or any of the teachers is just making sure that the teacher has actually gone through things that can break that he can understand now. So mm-hmm. that's what I would just suggest when you do your studies. Because even like a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, let's say, professors that you would get in business courses. I, I had uh, taken my AA in business management and administration, and <clears throat> none of them had businesses. But they're con- they're, yeah. they're talking about financial management. Yep. They're talking about mm-hmm. managerial management, uh, mm-hmm. uh, business tactics, marketing, planning. Mm-hmm. But they've never ran a business one yeah. time. And, and, yeah, I remember oh, reading an article about that. Yeah, that most business I, majors, it, you know, you got all most. That's like one of the most common degrees is like a business major, and there are no black businesses, hardly any black business. But that's like the biggest major of most uh, African American people is business, but nobody's running a business. I thought that was interesting. Right. Like I'll tell, I'll be real. Within the eight. I think almost eight, ten years that I was in school doing an AA in business. Most of my, most of the information that I use for my businesses now, it's been mm-hmm. so hot and been things that I've had to go through and experience to learn. Yeah. I didn't. I was, my tax course didn't didn't the, the course that I took in taxes was not nothing compared to how I had to really learn how to use the tax system. It's so, a and, yeah. and, and put my taxes out. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. until I actually put my hands on the on the paper and said there said, look, I got to do this, 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 and this. Spoke to tax. I got like uh, a lot of tax people that do taxes. Spoke mm-hmm. to people like that that actually do these things on a on a professional they basis been, to mm-hmm. learn. From them. So yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that stuff, especially like in school in high school, they don't prepare you for none of that. They don't. Oh, they don't even have like real business or te- or or just financial awareness classes in, in, mm-hmm. in high school. That's probably one of the oh, most no. important things that a teenager should know when they get out. Because as soon as you yep. get out of school, the first thing they do when you get on campus, they're they're hitting everybody yeah, off with credit, credit card. cards. Yeah. Credit cards. They're giving you yeah. two thousand, three thousand, five hundred, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of limits. And you go out and just buy a whole bunch of mess. Mhm. And then get stuck yeah. with the bill after two years. Right. And you know what? That was actually one of the topics I was going to bring up today. Um, Is a college education worth it nowadays? Is it worth it to go to college? Are you um, encouraging your children at this point, uh, if you have kids in high school or junior high or whatever, are you preparing them or encouraging them to go to college? I believe right now that the bachelor degree is just like a high school degree at this point. Yeah. I, and um, I, I really think if we're going to keep participating in this education system, that you might as well just do that public all the way through. But that's just politically my political stand on that. Um, if we're going to continue to be in public school in a public environment when it comes down to schooling, having to the same uh, core uh, things that need to be covered by the and dictated by the state and federal government, even mm-hmm. in in college, though we might as well just uh, have that stuff just like how we're paying to, paying for our taxes. Everybody just start at a local community high, community high uh, college, mm-hmm. get your bachelor's in there, and then go from there. Whoever needs to get their master's goes from there, but. If the education edu, the, the education so behind in consideration to the rest of the world, you know what I'm saying? And and the funny thing is we're still being the most advanced, but we're like the most 
most, uh, I don't want to say the word stupid, but we're the most far behind when it comes down to basic education. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, mm-hmm. like we start we start college we start algebra like around sixth grade, and by that time, uh, and that's like prep uh, pre algebra. Uh, by that time, most people in sixth grade have already gone through algebra, and they're going to uh, higher math mathematics, calculus, and trigonometry mm-hmm. by seventh eighth grade. So mm-hmm. just just on that level alone, and mathematics being the most important for me, I think that's the most important. Um, uh, subject that we learn mathematics and sciences. So mm-hmm. the, those two, those two should be the ones that we should we if well I don't want to put the word we, but America should be. We know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Advanced, <laughs> advanced, okay. advanced. So so you know I think I I shed I shed the light I'll shed light on making sure that this is happening inside of our family structure. That's one of the things that we should focus in in our family, of course, families is education within. But um, I don't believe college is worth anything, even yeah. to a certain degree when it comes out. The, there, there's certain, there was a conversation I had a long time ago about, like, people that do certain jobs, like uh, a doctor. Mm-hmm. Most doctors, they go to school for 8 to 12 years, Mm-hmm. including their tenure and um they really just get told they they really don't like let's say the heart surgeon right mm-hmm. after he gets his 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 degrees and all his all his certifications yeah he's certified to work on your heart but he's only been told how to work on your heart he yeah. hasn't really seen like okay, this is how the heart works and it's mm-hmm. not until like maybe ten years down the line, when he's been doing heart surgery, open heart surgeries, that he uh, understands. Oh, I can just flick it right here, and then boom, it starts pumping. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. certain things like that, certain things like that is like you know, there's a lot of experience that has to go in. Sometimes it's not even the way uh, medicine, medicine is treated by cause. It's not really treated holistically here. Mm-hmm. You know. It's, Right. If right, the kidney right. failing, the first thing they think is that let's bio, do a biopsy to the kidney and see what's going on. And then if that's uh, if it's failing, okay, we're gonna have to do surgery, cut it out, put a new one in. And, and mm-hmm. that's so maybe the kidney's not the cause. Maybe the person drinking all that damn alcohol or <laughs> that might be the cause. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the holistic approach, and Dr. Sadie spoke on that, is like holistically. We don't you don't treat a disease mm-hmm. just the uh, Coming out on what Just part symptoms. of the body mm-hmm. is the symptom. You don't treat the symptoms; you treat the whole entire holistic right. disease. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, let's see. We've got about 25 minutes left in the show. Um, if you all are on the line and you'd like to chime in, just press the number one. And if you're listening, the number to call is five one five six zero five nine eight six two. We don't have, you know, a, a set topic or anything. We're just kind of vibing out on Monday. Since this is a, a Money Monday or Ojo uh, we're kind of talking about finances, and, and that's the theme of the day. Um, I remember uh, Sister Felicia and Damon, you know, they did Masterminds Monday on Enlightenment and Transformation. And by the way, those shows are still up if you go to the YouTube channel. Uh, enlightenment and transformation they gave away tons of information lots of really good information just on finances and uh and and business strategies uh let's see we've got a caller here let's see this is 817 817 peace how are you what's good um Brother Randy and I listened to um, last Sunday's show, and I just wanted to let Brother Byron know that we have sent our love and support to your Baba. Yeah, and we are definitely. That love, strength, and power. May your father fight and power, Brother Byron. Fear not, you mm-hmm. don't have to endure long. We stand strong by your side. We are an inspiration to my family and what we are striving for in regards to nation building and having honorable character. I give thanks mm-hmm. so soon, Brother Byron. I just woke up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
it's a little low. Yeah, it's a little bit low. But uh, definitely appreciate that. I'm pretty sure Brother Byron does, too. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome man. Um, and who's some, he's someone who's always there to help out. I know when I first came into I knew, uh, he was one of the first ones to reach out to me and to help me um helped me with a lot of a lot of things and so I've kept in touch with him you know uh you know just through messages or whatever but ever since then of course it's a little bit different now but um just an awesome 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 brother and we're definitely I still have my candles burning you know um the chief gave us a ritual to do yesterday and so that's definitely going. And I was able to get a message to him yesterday as well. So um, definitely our prayers and support and love and everything is with him now. And, you know, him and his family, his children at this time. So, yeah, thank you for that, Sister Sequoia. Yes, no problem. Uh, me and Randy also uh, started the ritual yesterday. And we still have our candle mm-hmm. burning as well. And, um mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting as we were doing the ritual. We played uh, Caribbean music, and that sent mm-hmm. me and Randy on a whole journey. Like, yeah. I found music, <laughs> and I'm like, this music sounds just like Byron. This has to be the music that mm-hmm. is my life. So, we're kind of like, mm-hmm. I wonder, is mental music, is it? <laughs> and we went back mm-hmm. to mental music, which is supposed yeah. to be like the first type of music. So, I'm, I wonder if that's the type of music it's part of life. So, that was that was mm-hmm. awesome. And, um, yeah. Yeah wanted to mm. say that and me and Randy well, were very you. touched by just what he yeah. said mm-hmm. oh. definitely and to that to you know to share something like that with us when he did that 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 gave me a sense of you know this is really he really sees us as family you know what I mean that is that is a real bond you know just just a small community that we do have to be able to share something like that so publicly and Byron is such a strong person, you know what I mean? I was very honored that he would even share that with us and, and touch by that, that he would um, reach out and consider, you know, sharing that with us. So definitely, yeah. he definitely has the support. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for calling in, Sequoia. Thank you. Right. Well, uh, are you going to be on the call tonight? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Yeah, I just want to remind everybody on the line, we do have the women's call tonight. Um, If you're not signed up with uh, New Life Global Ministries, you need to do that in order to be on the call. You can just go to anewlifeglobal.org. You can get to it through the app, Anu Nation, if you have a Google phone. Um, It's real simple to do. It doesn't cost anything or require anything. Uh, as soon as you do that, we will um, get the letter out to you. It probably won't be the same day, you know, as the meeting because we check uh, the the emails are checked, you know, at a certain time or whatever. But we'll do our best to get you in uh, for the for the following uh, Monday. But we have those meetings every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And so, uh, looking forward to speaking with you all tonight and uh, seeing your faces, you know. It's always uh, good to talk to you all. And there's also the men's call that um, meets, is it the first Sunday, Anwar? First Sunday of the month? Yeah, next Sunday. Or this is coming up Sunday. It's coming up First Sunday of the month. Yeah, so um, same Mm -hmm. rules apply there. If you want to be a part of the call, you have to be uh, a member of the the ministry. Um, so you do have to go to um, a new life org to sign up for that as well. All right. So things are being, things are moving, moving and grooving. Uh, the community's growing. Um, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, an awesome um, experience so far. So I'm grateful to, you know, the women's group as well as the men's group. Uh, let's see. We got about 18 minutes left. And if you have a question or comment, simply press the number one. The number to call is 515-605-9862. I wanted to, um, let me see if I have this clip ready. I wanted to lighten the mood a little bit (laughs) uh, and just share something that is just hilariously funny with you all. 
um, every time I hear this, I just crack up because it's so authentic and it's so hilarious um, that I just had to share it. And, and this is an old, this comes from an old YouTube video. You all may have seen it or may have heard it or whatever already, but I have just got to share this. Um, and another reason why I want to share it is because Chief always, always, uh, I got you, Amor, um, always kind of dogs. <laughs> he, he'll dog us from the South. You know what I mean? People from the South. He'll jump on Sister uh, Michelle all the time for being from the South. I get the Southern jokes. Anwar busted me one time talking about my Southern accent. <laughs> um, so uh, I wanted to share this clip with you all because I promise you when I saw it, I just laughed for days and days and days. And I want to see if you all can pick up anything that is being said. Um, it's hilarious. So I'm going to play this clip and then I'll let you know where you can get it from. But this is this is hilarious. So just to give you all just another little uh, comic relief uh, real quick, I'm going to play this for you. Let me get everything right. Say and spell your first and last name, please. You let me know when you're ready now. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, say and spell your first and last name, please. But what you want me to start off? Say and spell your first and last name, please. What? Say and spell your first and last name. Okay. They call me Can Man. Okay. All right. What's your what's your, what's your real name? Ozel Gary. Okay. Will you spell your first real name? Huh? Spell your first last name. First you can't name. read. My oh. name Ozel Gary. Okay. Well, I need to know how to spell it. Well, I just letting you know. I'm down here from Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Well, I born and raised here. Okay. I lived here in 33 years. I thought they might would change, but I see it ain't changing okay. no more. Can, can I get you to spell your name for me, please? O Z E W. I just told you. Okay, will you spell your last name? J I Y. Okay. 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 So, so were you here yesterday when the storm came? Well, no, I wasn't here. Okay. I wasn't here. Okay. So I was right around town, and uh, they told me, say, you better go on Gallup Street. That you stay, you stay with, <laughs> you visit your nieces. I said, yeah. So you better go down there and say, say the storm must have hit something. I didn't know this house. I came down here, I saw all them limbs and things around, and I saw a hole in the window, and I said, what's going on here? So they said, your niece is in the hospital. I thought it was in, in Jackson, in university. Some guy told me, said, the university, he was drinking. I started to go to university. And some told me, you better stop at Hard Whistle. I went up there, they was up there. All right. And so after I saw them in the hospital, I said, how y'all doing? They doing pretty good and everything. And uh, I said, well, and uh, I did not talk to the choir and I come on back down here. But anyway, I'm going to get to the big portion. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And I went by Stark. You know what I'm talking about, Stark? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a friend of mine saw all them guys who do, do work on work on light. Mm -hmm. They was eating happy. Still, still doing work on the light. Mm -hmm. They up there eating. Black neighborhood, no light. I, I, I got in my truck. All the white neighborhood mm -hmm. were lit up. They didn't give a damn about the black folk. They, they, one, one, one black man said, why you all down there? <clears throat> they take care of the black population. Say, they got, they white got light. Say, why come y'all in, in the black neighborhood? One, one white man, red and they said, we don't give a damn about no neighborhood. That's what they said. They didn't say, why the black? He ain't said no neighborhood. And they showing you he don't give a damn about black folk. He, he, he just, well, they show it off a lot of people looking. See what I'm talking about? This is Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm talking about? There it is now. 35 years after it was going to change. Ain't changed the same damn thing. Same thing. And then I said, I'm about ready to get the hell out of here. The same thing. We're back in 30s and 40s. The same ain't no different. The same damn thing. Ain't no different. They, they risk it. They, they prick it. They every damn thing. You see what I'm talking about? They look at your face, smile. They don't mean no damn good. They ain't no damn good. I tell you the faith. They ain't no damn good. They look out for the white people, but they don't look out for the black. Look at Bummer. They hate Bummer because he's black. They don't, they don't work with Bummer. They work against him. You see what I'm talking about? They ain't no damn good. I hope Bummer just you forget about it. Well, let's, let's talk more about the storm. You guys are without power. But that's God work. But I would just say that's God work. God just showing them that he's the boss. They take their own word. They don't own right. themselves. God on them. God can pop their finger and they be dead. Okay, but God give them a change. Thought they might change. But they ain't going to change. They ain't nothing going to change. They damn they but death. Do you have anything else about the storm? Yeah. Okay. But I just told you that's God's word. I understand that. But 
doing a story on. Well, yeah, but I was just saying. No, I know. They ain't gonna never change. Ain't nothing gonna change. I'm a devil. I just told you. I know. Well, do you have anything else, I mean, we left out about the storm? I know food, man, I got like it. See, these my nieces. I got to say what to say. I say they both just bought food, all that meat and stuff. They gonna go down the dream. See what I'm talking about? Is they gonna pay for the food? Hell no. They black. They might pay for the white food, but they ain't gonna pay for the black food. Right. They don't give a damn. Well, we appreciate you talking with us. I, I done said all I got to say. No, I know. A lot of people like to hold back, but I don't hold back nothing. I, I take just like it is. I'm getting the hell out of him. I ain't gonna stay him. Good. You should. <laughs> I wouldn't want to stay here. Right? Hell no. So y'all putting him on the news too. I don't hold back nothing. My mama didn't let me to say what I had to say. Don't hold back nothing. You want me to do one for you? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Fuck this shit. I'm in it for the day. You guys want to hang out and get some video? Am I okay. allowed to go? Ain't nothing gonna shake them from yeah. the death. Yeah. Ain't nothing gonna shake them but death. That was great. Right out of my head. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. That, let me tell you, every time I hear that clip, I just light up because it is just, a, could you all tell anything that was going on in that conversation? <laughs> could you all understand anything? A little uh, bit. I, I, I heard it because I'm from the South and I know his brother was speaking some real stuff. <laughs> That's, that's the messed up thing is that I actually, I actually understood the brother. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And there's so much wrong inside of that conversation that, that yes. even the, oh, man, but it's funny. Was, I had to spit out my coffee when I first heard him, though. <laughs> <laughs> he, had said, he said, you can't read? What's your problem? I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because to watch that clip on YouTube, you got to see the expressions and the lady that's interviewing him and everything. And he was so serious. He was not playing. He said, I just told you, you can't read. But it's so funny because even though it sounds just, you know, if you're not, you like you said, if you're, you're not from the South, he was really... He was he. I would say this is a conscious man. You know what I mean. He was really saying some some deep stuff. She thought she was just gonna get an interview, <laughs> and she got school for real. But I promise you, I thought about that when Chief was uh, jumping on Michelle the other day <laughs> about uh, being from the South, and I I remember that clip, and I said, Oh my God, I have got to play this clip because I said I want to see how many people can really understand. Now, this, this was uh, a story out of Mississippi. So um, there was a storm or whatever that came through, and they were trying to interview different people, you know, to talk about the storm. And you know they always try to pull aside the person that they, <laughs> the, the worst person they can find to do the interview with. But I promise you, I just, I promise you, I just lit up when I saw, <laughs> when I saw this interview. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have to use that. I got to use it. I have got to use it. But, uh, yeah. So, that was my little bit of comic relief. <laughs> One of the things that um, New York is always find funny about us, uh, the Southerners, is that they say we slow. Mm -hmm. and they, they say that we think real slow. But, honestly, I don't let that fool you to a lot of, a lot of degrees because I've seen that go very south. I've, like, literally, I've seen that go south. A lot mm -hmm. of times here in Florida, when people from New York come down here and they think they can uh, fast talk us. Mm. Yeah, don't, uh, there, there's something called, there's two, there's two different things that we got. We got Southern hospitality. Yeah. And then we, we got a, a mind state down here where our our focus ain't on, that, on a real fast-paced living. Yeah. A lot of the decision-making <laughs> we do is very slow. And mm -hmm. we do it slow. We 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 check. We do like um, uh, physical checks to decisions that we make a lot. A lot of us, and it's just it's really just because we've been kind of always worried about like okay, if we 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 do this situation right here. What would happen here? You know what I'm saying? So we always mm -hmm. kind of step think two steps ahead. So that's why we're moving for for the average New Yorker. It might seem like. Uh, we're moving slow, but we're actually thinking about two, three positions ahead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I've, I've, seen, you... I've seen that happen a lot down here. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, yeah, but I promise you, O O Z O Z double L, just I mean, <laughs> he just cracked me up because that is something old people do. Because this is an older man, and they say double L and double R. They do not say you know the letter twice. <laughs> just everything double about R. it. I pr- double R, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> not R, R. So yeah. You gotta give a shout out to Bobby Emmett on that one. Man. Ah, you, I forgot about Bobby. Bobby Emmett, man. Oh, yeah. One of our, uh, what a wonderful teacher. So much great information. It's just yeah. Yeah, every time he talked, boys, like it was great. It was great it to hear. It is hilarious. It is hilarious. I was gonna ask Sister Michelle. She's from New York. What did you think? Could you understand anything that was being said? Honestly, oh, no. <gasps> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I did towards the middle, but not the first uh, part. When he was like spelling out his name, uh, I was like, "Are those letters?" I don't even. I don't think I heard. It. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. I mean, let me tell you that that to me that gets my day going. If you all just type in, um, I think type his name in into YouTube, you'll actually find that video. You got to watch the video. It is hilarious. It is so hilarious, I tell you. I said she got is that, that, that reporter guy. Double L. O Z double L. Yeah. O Z double L. Let you know. Uh, double L. That's right. I think that was his name. Uh Ozell. Yeah, Ozell Gary or something like that. Yeah, if you just type that in, you'll find it. Because I'm telling you, you have got to watch the interview. This man was so serious. <laughs> And um, like I said, it just tripped me out because the reporter, you know, uh, something she did to him while he was talking made me um, made me think about just how still in the South, uh, there still uh, people are still so very disrespectful because, you know, as he was talking, that's why I said she didn't know who she was talking to, because as as the man was talking, you can hear her saying, OK, OK. Okay, you know, okay, <laughs> and I was just thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like this lady is really rude, you know, the whole time he's talking, okay, like mm-hmm. back off, you know, being kind of defensive or whatever. She's like, okay, but the man was just like he said, he's telling it like it is. His mama told him, don't hold nothing back, <laughs> so he did not hold back. <laughs> And I said, you know what? I can't wait until I get that age where I can do the same thing. You don't have to apologize for anything. You don't have to hold back anything. You know, you you have earned the right by that age to say whatever it is you want to say. You know. So mama yeah. and pappy, mommy and mama and pappy always give good advice. <laughs> 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 yes, I can't believe Michelle didn't understand it. Oh wow, wow. Well, you 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 know what, Michelle, you you're down south now, so you'll start to pick it up a little bit. You know, have something? you? My neighbor, my neighbor uh-huh. is always talking to me, and I just always, I'm like, uh huh, okay. <laughs> and I feel so bad. I barely <laughs> talk to him because of that. You don't understand anything he's saying. No, I don't. And he tries wow. to have a conversation with me. Aaron's mm-hmm. the one who's really good with it because he has time mm-hmm. to sit down and and ask him. And he'll ask him. He's like, "What'd you say? You say it again? <laughs> What's that word?" But I, I don't. I'm usually just seeing him when I'm throwing out the trash or I'm doing laundry or something. But yeah, I think I have to get an. You have to get an ear for it, right? You have to kind of like. I don't know. Listen uh, really carefully. Yeah, yeah. You probably have to listen a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. I just, I'll, I'll check back with you in three years and see how it changes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll see how, uh, how that accent has changed. You know it's gonna rub off on you too, Michelle. Don't, it's don't, gonna don't rub act like off. Not. It is. Well, I do like the y'all. The <laughs> I know. I do like the y'all. I I like that that, that word a lot. So it's, it's sleep. It's slowly sinking in and seeping in. 
Come on over to the dark side. <laughs> yeah. Come on over. Three years, you'll you'll be sounding like me. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm telling you, if you guys put that video up, that'll give you a laugh for the day. Yeah, I I, I still remember the conversation about oil. Oil? What do you mean? Oil. Chief was talking about oil with a mm-hmm. with a Y. Oil. Oh, okay. Oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oil. Yeah. Oil. Yeah. oil. Like yeah. when you uh, see that expression, say, like oh. if you're drinking alcohol, you if you're drinking alcohol, you you want the oil. Oil. Yeah. They say oil. They oil. don't say oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You chief talking about yeah. oil. Oil. Yeah. Oil. Oil. <laughs> I think I say oil. I don't say oil. I don't, I don't, I've never caught myself saying oil. I don't think oil. oil. Well, I, I guess that's for. I guess that's for the two oil. What you? What you want? What you, you on that oil? We on that oil, man. Yeah, we on that oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I tell you, um, I don't know. And then you know, the further south you go, it's interesting because when you go to Louisiana. The accents are so crazy. The accents are so crazy in, in Louisiana. It's like it's southern, but then at the same time, it sounds like uh, maybe you've been up north for a little while, and then at the same time, you got some um, uh, some French thrown in. Then you got just that. It, the further south you go, then you hit New Orleans, and you got something. You know something else all together, but mm-hmm. uh, it's just it's just really weird. So it's like, you know, mine doesn't kick in until I visit my family. It's like once I started talk, once I start talking to family members, then it just comes out. It just comes out, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I saying? You know, it just comes out because the accent is so thick and it's so heavy. It's like, I uh, what? Cause you got some Creole in there, you got some French in there, you got just, just. Su- I tell you who you should watch to under to hear it. Um, what was that show, Crocodile Hunter or something like that, with the people that go and and hunt the crocodiles? I remember watching that one time, and there was a guy on there. Oh my gosh, from New Orleans, and his accent was so heavy, so so heavy. Let me take this, uh, take one call real quick before we go. Um, Four zero one. Good morning, it's Danetta. Peace, Danetta. How are you? I'm fine. You know, I was listening to you talking about the southern accent and the uh-huh. dialect. And, you know, it's ironic because Cat Williams, um, when you look at his stand-up, he talks about it a little bit and makes mm-hmm. fun of it. But, you know, I was, I was going to ask a question. Do you think that, you know, we talk about African uh, language being tonal language. Do you think mm-hmm. that uh, that language down south is somewhat tonal um you know what i never even thought about it like that but you know what um hmm to me it sounds like it has somewhat a rhythm you know it does uh, have a rhythm even when they say oil you know and Mm -hmm. y'all and jackson jackson mississippi it all had like Mm -hmm. a like a rhythm to Mm -hmm. it you know yeah, it's very. I think it's very rhythmic. I don't know. Um, I don't know about tones because when I think about tones, I'm thinking about like maybe one word in particular being pronounced two or three different ways. Ways, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's very rhythmic, and there's um, almost like a melody to it. Sometimes once it, once it's going, <laughs> once you really get a person going. Yeah, because he was just going. Interesting to watch. Yeah, he was going. <laughs> He was going. He was going. He was like, "Okay, now let me get to the get to the big portion." Okay, right. all right. You know, it's like a little right, cadence, right. a little rhythm going. He said, like, "Okay, all right, here we go." So it's like um, when you, especially when you get around somebody that tells stories a lot. I mean, it can just be, just, I mean, an adventure in itself just to listen to the person talk. I had a grandfather like that. His, um, his accent was so thick and so heavy. Sometimes it would take me a minute. I'm like, what? You know, I really have to sit and pay, sit and listen to try to understand what is he talking about? You know, because we would have to always, um, you know, visit the grandparents or whatever for the summer. So 
you know, after not hearing him like on a daily basis every day, uh, just hearing him all the time to then it, it, it would take me a couple of days, you know, take me a little while to, to warm up to the accent again. <laughs> and that's why I say now it's like when I, when I go back after talking to them, you know, after when I get in the conversation, it just starts to come back. It all comes back. You know, that my accent, that um, really kind of Southern accent, it just really slips out really bad. And I know I'm country like already, like I know you can hear it. But it's really thick. My <laughs> godmother. Out of family. My godmother is my mother's closest. My mother's best friend. She's been knowing her since thirteen. She's thirteen, but she's she's my godmother, and she's from Street Point, Louisiana, Street Port, Louisiana. Street Port. And, mm-hmm. Yep. And yes. sometimes mm-hmm. when I speak to her, um, uh, she would hear me out, but she would when she talks to me, it'll be mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 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 And she won't. And she would mm-hmm. feel, and it's weird because I would say a word, and she would feel the conversation, and then she'll right. give me her advice, and then it'll mm-hmm. be some good advice. And I'm like, you're not even. It's almost like she can, like she was there, but she's not mm-hmm. there, and that's why I noticed. I was sticking to one of my customers at the store I work at, and um, we were talking. I don't know how we got in a conversation. We got to jump into some kind of conversation, and he's from Dallas, but he was mm-hmm. his accent was super duper strong. And he mm-hmm. was saying how he uh, was moving around in California, traveling here because job had him traveling, and he has to fill people out. Like he got to sniff them out a little bit, to find out mm-hmm. where they're coming from. And mm-hmm. he was, I could feel him sniffing me out. I was like, "Are you doing mm-hmm. that right now?" Because I can kind of mm-hmm. feel it, you know. And he started <laughs> laughing. He was like, "Yeah, you know." And he started breaking it down because you know he said sometimes when he say yes, ma'am. Thank you, and people get offended. He could understand why, you know, yeah. and things of that nature. But I just want to share that thought. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, to share that clip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's something that you do down here. You do say yes, yes, ma'am, no, sir. Like that's like ingrained. It took me a long time to break away from that because I remember even starting school, uh, going to going to school where they started cutting that out in school. And saying you don't have to say that like down here in the south they started doing that you don't have to say that or you don't have to call me uh mrs or mr or whatever you can just you know use the last name you know or use a teacher's first name or something like that that caused like a huge that was like a huge deal down here where people were like nah this is not that's not right you don't uh uh-uh you don't do that so that was like a big deal, but yeah, I mean, I even catch myself if you guys listen. Sometimes I'll be going, mm, mm. Yes, you know, I'll go, mm. <laughs> I do it a lot, or I say, mm, mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, I guess you know, it is a southern thing. It's like, uh, you know, you just kind of get that, mm, 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 you know. <laughs> It is. It's like you just kind of. I don't. I don't even know how to describe it or why. Why it is. You know. I don't know. But yeah, you go down south, you'll get that a lot. <laughs> a lot. It, it. It just. It just comes out. It really does. Which you might get a chance to because we're trying to take a poll right now on a newlifeglobal.org, trying to see where everybody would like to have the retreat. Um, you can actually go there and uh, cast your vote. I think. The two places that are on, there's three selections. The first one is, I think it's Charlotte, the Charlotte area, uh, which is North Carolina, um, or New Orleans, or you can uh, choose a different place and um, write it in, you know, write in where you want to go. So those are three uh, choices that we have so far. We're just kind of taking a poll and see where everybody would like to have the retreat. I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of with New Orleans. Uh, I've never been over. New Orleans, there. really? I've actually, I've actually been up and down the East Coast, but I've never been mm-hmm. outside of like a like uh, Georgia is probably the furthest inland huh. I've been into. <laughs> I've been up and down the East Coast, uh, all the way up mm-hmm. to Maryland, uh, New York, mm-hmm. New York, and down. But I've yeah. never been outside of uh, a, a closer to the West Coast. Oh wow! Uh, you love it. Never, never, you love never. it. I've been all around the world. I've been mm-hmm. South America, from Europe to uh, Italy, and down mm-hmm. to uh, all them places. But I've just never been over in the West Coast of, yeah. uh, of America. Yeah. 
You love it. I'm 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 telling you, I love there's so there's some good things about the South. Really, really great things about the South. And then of course there's some not so great things. But you know, you can say that about any place in the state. You know what I mean? But I love Louisiana. I love the 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 red dirt. <laughs> I love uh, yeah. the one thing I don't love is the mosquitoes. Make sure you are packing something for some mosquitoes. But um, uh, I'm from Florida. That'd be <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, y'all got them too. <laughs> but uh, we got yeah. we got gators. We got gators in the sewage system. Trust me, we we don't have like yeah. straight oh, they, cats. And they they're gators. they're in New Orleans too. <laughs> they're in Louisiana too. So you know that is a swamp. You know, as soon as you come into the city, it's like the whole city is just on water. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I love, I love Louisiana. I really do. I, I like it. I think I could actually, yeah, I, I really do love Louisiana because there's still so much, uh, land there that hasn't been so developed. You know what I mean? There's still like, you know, plenty of trees and, you know, especially like, uh, you know, uh, lakes, I mean, parks and, and, and things like that, you know, places to do outdoor things. Um, I, I love it. So I think you all would have like an awesome time in New Orleans. I think you really like it. Yeah. Cool. So we'll see. We will see what happens. But uh, yeah, make sure you pack something from the, for the mosquitoes or the birds because they are as big as birds. <laughs> They do not play. They do not play. Um, So anyway, thank you all for calling in. Uh, We've come uh, to the end of the show. Uh, Thank you all for vibing out with us. Yeah. Uh huh. A thousand pardons. Um, I was just wondering um, because I I I didn't get a chance to say yesterday um, during the open thing. Yesterday, um, so I figured, well, I made sure I got up to make sure I could come in today to ask. Um, I did go through the app to mm-hmm. join the ministry mm-hmm. to get on the women's women's call last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't get anything back, and so that was when one of you- my. What day did um, you sign up? Um, it's been from before the last one. The not yeah, because I thought I'd be able to get into the last one. Mm-hmm. The one okay. that just you know, it was um yeah it was okay. probably. Saturday or Sunday of, mm-hmm. um and and so um and I'd been kind of just quiet like I said at the okay. top of the um, show that I was still kind of okay. cause the whole month okay. the whole month well was, I will I'll um I'll reach out to Sister Ty and she does the organizing and I'll see make sure she has um has your name and we'll get it sent out to you we'll try to send it to you today Okay. Mm-hmm. All righty. All right. So, uh, um, uh-huh. yes. Uh, is, is this is Danita still on the on the on the line. Danetta. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Danetta. I've been wanting to uh, reach out to your husband, so I don't know if you guys can link that up. So, uh, find me on Facebook or whatever. Okay. I'll most definitely. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's it. I'm listening. Oh, I am most definitely uh, inviting him. I took the advice from the brothers, and I invited him to the um, um, the uh, man. Um, Men's call. Yes, I'm sorry. And um, mm-hmm. he he has to warm up a little bit towards it. Even when I'm sharing him about the women's call, me joining, he was, and I was telling him, um, I just share my little thoughts about it, how I felt about the women's call. And he was like, well, I'm going to have to warm up till I get to a place to do that because that sounds like something that I think he wants to do. He's just watching to see what I'm doing or how it's affecting mm-hmm. me. You know? mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, he he's giving it, he's, it's, it's more, he's like a car. He's warming up. He's like a mm-hmm. car. So you have to wait okay. till he's real hot and ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. If, 
like if um, uh, you get my information or whatever is handed off to him, and then we can have a talk. Because trust me, we're all at we're all at base level, and we're all trying to figure out how we're going to move from here at step one. That's really what I'm focused on. Is focusing on getting past step one. So. Thank you. I always say thank you for that, Brother and Walsh. Mm-hmm. Thank you a lot. I most definitely. Um, I might make. I'm doing a sister call. Maybe I can get your information through Sister Kim, or yeah. Facebook or something like that. I figure out a way. This the world is a way. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Um, Again, can, I say to can I say one more thing? Can I say one more thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. One more thing. Uh, this is awesome. This is a good community. I don't feel like, even though I have never met none of you guys in, you know, in person, just the conversation and energy is great. You know, I, I love it. This is this is great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Could I also say something? Yeah, Gotta be happy, you know what I'm saying? Because we're all living a lot. We're all real good, you know what I'm saying? We're all happy, happy, we're all living. You know what I'm saying? Look, that's not um, a southern accent. That's a straight Southern accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something one last thing to <laughs> this is Georgina. Um I did get a chance to I wanted to thank um 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 well um war um war um war okay like you um, um the war oh I thought you said L okay so I uh, I apologize um war I wanted to let you know that I did get a chance to um, hear the call, um, and 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 you mentioned um, wanting to help me, and I just wanted to give thanks for um, that that and that I I that that chief mm-hmm. was right in, in regards to you know I didn't take it any it at all wrong that you suggested what I did as a matter of fact I was able to take the advice on and, and just listen and that's what I was trying to say like it's been um I've been kind of falling back from commenting and um um calling cuz I didn't really know you know what space and place I was in or um, even if I was even wanted around, so um, I did um, even like. No, I was yeah, saying, you definitely wanted. We we definitely yeah. want you want you in. We're helping you. Where we, oh, there's a lot of love here, so a lot of the things yeah. that we're going to give you is going to help you. Like like Chief was saying on the situation was that you're going to see where you're at a year from now, and you're going to look back and see that see the situations that happen and see how you've grown within the year. And trust me, I've been with, with Ann New for about, uh, I think about two and a half years, maybe three. Um, mm-hmm. And listening, just by sitting back and listening and really, I, I'm going to accentuate that, listening, sitting back and listening and learning from the teachings and the, and the experiences that people are sharing is going to help you get over a lot of the things that you've been that's been holding you back. So just be pe- be positive, be focused, be uh, very studious. We're all, we're all students. Uh, no matter right. where we are, no matter where we are on the chain that we were speaking of that that conversation, that we're all still still learning. We don't know it all. Because mm-hmm. if we right. knew it all, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so right. we're all here to help. Right. It's and all love, what... man. All love. Yes. Thank you so much. That's what was kept me. That's what kept me actually um, here was this listening to him say to me about being a year from now. Um, yes. That let me know that he was not saying um, he didn't want me around. However, I was Definitely. listening to a lot of the other shows and a lot that was going on, and just listening and being quiet. And I 
started to kind of get a mixed feel for things because of certain things that was said and just different vibes. So I, I honestly, um, really like I was saying at the top of the hour or the top of the show that it was, I was happy to be on the call and to hear Kim and, and the energy and the format, and, you know, just everything flowing so nicely. And even what the caller said before, um, about the community and not knowing everybody and just taking in a lot of the a lot of the shows and listening um, the, the, thing um, I, the thing I accentuate the thing I accentuate when we give advice do the work do the work that's one of the things that's going to really get you to the point where you want to be at within that year is if you do the work you know there's a lot of things that I've had to do to even uh, cut away from in my life because I had to do the work to get to this point where, where I'm at. And I'm not, I, I, I'm not that far from you. So just always make sure that you know that you got somebody in this community that's going to look back and put their hand out while they're looking forward and holding your brother's hand or sister's hand that's in front of them. So it's the chain, the chain, baby, the chain. <laughs> right, and I and I just want to thank everybody because it 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 does feel right. Like the caller said before, I forget her name. Um, um, Donetta. Donetta, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know it is. It's a really nice community, and um, I went through a lot of different feelings or a lot of different emotions, and and a lot of different thoughts and a lot of different stuff um, in the last month. And um, I feel good about it. And uh, that's why I wanted to be able to say something yesterday. Like, I feel good because I get it. You know, okay. I get it. So, thank All you, right. everybody. Kim, Michelle, um, everybody. Yeah, we're going to get a sign up for the women's group. Oh, you, go ahead. I didn't hear you all. I'm sorry. I didn't either. Have you, have you signed up for the phase one training yet? Oh, that's a that that was my uh, my deciding factor. Honestly, was to be able to call in today to see what the vibe was going to be, to see if I was going to move further. And I'm I'm glad that um, I am because, like I said, I was kind of starting to feel some different type of vibes or mixed mm-hmm. um, feelings or emotions, mm-hmm. and didn't know whether I was mm-hmm. even wanting around or not. So. Um, I don't know. Get, I get, 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 in, get in on it because I'm telling you, this challenge is going to be it, it's going to be very interesting. You know, I was doing some work for things I'm doing, and I'm just I'm excited like just by doing the stuff I was doing uh, in regards to it. So I think it's going to be fun. I, I think we're going to have some real uh, good advice and real interesting things that pop up throughout it. So yeah, you know, catch us yeah. while we're doing yeah, the challenge. So- catch us while we're doing the challenge. Yeah. Well, I'll a challenge. Yeah, because I, 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 we'll do I don't know if we'll do that again or um, if that'll be something we do in the future. But um, again, make sure you sign up for the challenge. You can go to seduluhouse.com. And as soon as you visit the page, there'll be a huge pop up on the screen that'll give you some information. But again, you have to be enrolled in phase one to even be included. Mm-hmm in the challenge mm-hmm. all right so once you get signed up for phase one then you can then you can enroll in the challenge all right so looking forward to that the first exercise started on sunday yesterday and so right. this will go through june so you'll have plenty of time to uh get the assignments completed and you'll have a community there to support you uh blog posts videos audio clips um testimonials, everything. So it's a lot of work that's going mm-hmm. into it. Brother Anwar has been helping out. I appreciate that, Brother Anwar. Um, and Make and tons point. of, and, and other people as well, you know, that are part of a new, so um, shout out and thanks to everybody that's helping out on that. And so now um, we've come to the end of the show and I'm going to go ahead and close. And again, make sure you sign up for to be a part of the men's group, women's group. Go to seduluhouse.com for classes. And um, tomorrow is Tuesday, so we'll be back at our regular time from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. 
So make sure you tune in and um, we'll continue this conversation or pick up a new one at that time. All right. So thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your dawning and peace. Mm-hmm.